The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people all stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables. He said, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock, where they found little soil, and sprang up straight away, because there was no depth of the earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and having, not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell on thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. Then the disciples went up to him and asked, Why do you talk to them in parables? Because, he replied, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven are revealed to you, but they are not revealed to them. For anyone who has will be given more and he will have more than enough. But from anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The reason I talk to them in parables is that they look without seeing, listen without hearing or understanding. So in their case, this prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. You listen and listen again, but do not understand. You see and see again, but do not perceive, for the heart of this nation has drawn force, their ears are dull of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, for fear should they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and be converted and healed by me. But happy are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. I tell you solemnly, Many prophets and holy men long to see what you see and never saw it, to hear what you hear and never heard it. You therefore are to hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom without understanding, the evil one comes and carries off what was sown in his heart. This is the man who received the seed on the edge of the path. The one who received it on the path of the rock is the man who hears the word and welcomes it at once with joy. But he has no root in him. He does not last. Let some trial come or some persecution on account of the word, and he falls away at once. The one who received the seed in thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this world and the love of riches choke the word so that it produces nothing. And the one who received the seed in rich soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He is the one who yields a harvest and produces now in a hundredfold, now sixty, now thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, when we were small, we were all very hard. That's all? Hey, hey. That's saints, huh? Look at saints. Are you still listening to other parents? Huh? I know I was hard, so I don't know all of you. Thank God for Jesus. We were quite hard, man. I remember, in fact, being at the seminary. And then I began to, my grandma, my grandmother died, I think. No, she died. She died when I didn't quite feel anything. But I began to hear my grandmother's voice when I grew up with my grandparents. My mother died when I was two. So I began to hear my grandmother's voice. And the voice that I was hearing were all the things that she was telling me to do that I never liked to do and that I never did. You know? That's it. So, and, it just dawned on me, I'm becoming my grandmother. There's a time when we don't take on people. 
Huh? It's a time when we don't take what people tell you. Yeah, because, you know, they, when you're young, you think you're, you don't need to listen. But in the midst of that not listening, the word that was sown found soil. And sometimes that seed that was sown remained dormant for a while. It, it remained dormant until the time is right, when the conditions are right. When the conditions are right, then it began to sprang up and, and blossom and bear fruit. And that's why I tell parents, their job is to talk and children's job is to get vexed. That's the children's job. Their, they, their job is to get vexed. But you must ensure that that word is sown, that seed is sown in the hearts of children, in the hearts of our people. Because if there's nothing that can blossom, if there's nothing that is there that can grow, if there's nothing at that particular time, if not, if there's nothing for them to hold on to. Nothing for them to hold on to. Nothing for them to come back to. Even if they stray, at least they have something to come back to that they would know. And remember last week I said in Jesus' ministry that Jesus, people were taking on Jesus in, John, in Matthew chapter 11. And Jesus was, was preaching and John the Baptist doubted. He, he, he sang, he was all kind of ways, he was talking and they still were sharing him. And, and, and he was getting frustrated. And there were a, a, a few people who were listening to him. And so Jesus now is changing his strategy. He's changing his strategy because he realized that this is where they can run. And so he's no longer going to tell them exactly what he means. He's now speaking in parables. He's now speaking in parables because he wants now, he wants them to think. He wants them to think so that they might be able to, to, to understand. Because he realized that their hearts have grown coarse. There's a numbness. He's talking and nobody's taking much. So he changes it now. So he does not give them or tell them everything. But he speaks in a way, what are you talking about? They have to question what he's saying and question themselves to come to the meeting. So he allows them now to do some work. He allows them to do some work in thinking about what he's saying. So he's now trying to find the correct wavelength so that he might be able to reach them. He's, he's trying to find the correct wavelength so that he might be able to reach them and to be able to, to, to bring them to a place of conversion. And, and that's the task of every preacher. Every preacher of the word has to find the correct wavelength to be able to reach you know, people. He says, Father, that ought to be fly straight over my head. What are you talking about? Eh? Father, when you're looking around the bush, you lost him. And it is the art and craft, the art and science of, of homiletics that will enable us to understand the people who are before us and then to find the correct mechanisms so that we might be able to reach them. It's not an easy task. It's not an easy task in today's world because I think the heart of this nation has grown us. And there's a, a way in which the word of God has become very cliché become very cliché. So therefore, I, I hear that very We come to tell you, you know how much time we hear this, this reading? We come to tell you tonight. And, and therefore, we close our hearts to the dynamism of the world. We close our hearts to the power of the Dabar, the, 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 the Hebrew word for the word, the Dabar, the very power of God, because the word has a power of its own and on its own. It has a power of its own and on its own. And so in the midst of all that Jesus was going through, and people not responding to him, he changes his strategy now. 
And if you know, begin to speak to them in parables so that they might then do some work and that the grace of God might break through in their lives. And so they said, um, so the disciples said, Master, you're always talking in parables. Explain this thing to us. So not even the disciples understood what he was saying, and they were the ones who were following him closely. So much so as Jesus speaking in this esoteric way. And that's important at times, not always to give everything, but to let people do some good. All right, so understand the, the, the C exams, which will be on the 20th of August. So they have changed up the mathematics. I think they, they now have they now have problem solving, so they're now giving you plenty of problem solving. And the philosophy behind that is that the student then has to think. The student then has to think critically, to understand, to think critically. So as you just said, to see, to understand, and to do. That's the whole idea behind it. So it's not just a reproduction of a million and one fast paper or a million and one exercises, but you now have to think and be able to troubleshoot and to be able to understand. And this is the strategy that Jesus is now moving into, but and hence the reason why Jesus spoke in parables. You understand now why Jesus spoke in parables? Because he wanted the people, he wanted to get at their hearts and to get at their soul. And so his word went out. And though Jesus is, Jesus may have found a lot of resistance as he explained the parable. He said, you know, sometimes you're preaching, but the word falls on the edge. The word that falls on the edge are the word in which you proclaim an evil one comes and snatches that word from the heart of people. Snatches that word. So you hear a nice family and you and say, yes, the day, the day. I'm making up a, I'm making up a mind. I, I, I really go in and, and, and see if I can walk after the ways of God. I really want to commit myself to God. And then I find out, hey, God, hey, man. Are you going to check the woman there? Huh? And, and the word going on the door. The evil one comes and snatch that word easy, easy. Huh? I was too nice for man to say, say, no, 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 there we go. Hmm? Or, and this, or Jesus says, sometimes they start up, they come to church, and they say, let me, this year, this, this year, all year's night, I'm making a commitment. You know, we Catholic love to come to church all year's night, eh? And they love to make promises. They can't get sick all year's night. This all year's night, this year, 2020, COVID, no COVID, hurricane, storm, riot, whatever, I'm coming to church. And then, they realize, a watermelon cloud and things persecution come and you say, Wow, well, like I can preach out. Nothing working on for me, and when it's not a church thing and making sense. Huh? I crap up your knee. And you say, see that? Nah. So when the when the problems of life comes, when the persecution comes, then we begin to doubt whether God is ever present. We begin to question God. We begin to, to doubt. And so the word of the soul, it doesn't get time. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't go deeply down into our hearts where we can withstand the, the, the strong breeze. You know, if you have a tree and the tree, the roots are shallow. When the breeze blows, the breeze is going to blow down the tree. The roots have to go down deeply so that it can withstand, it can withstand the, 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 the strength of the breeze and the strength of what is coming. And we have to put down those deep roots in our hearts. Who Jesus says, sometimes a preacher goes down and he says, some people come. But then there is nothing. Or you go to one of these big charismatic rallies or prayer meetings or, or some Jesus explosion and you, or a core retreat and you come up on fire for the Lord. Huh? And then the week after, all the fire burn out. Eh? All the fire burn out the week after. Because the roots must go deep down. It must go deep down within our hearts. And that's what Jesus is saying. 
that when the sower goes out to sow, all of these are the challenges that we will be facing. And these challenges can be daunting. These challenges can be frustrating. These challenges can really make the, the, the preacher, the soul of the word, become despondent. But Jesus is saying, that is not your issue. Because in a mysterious way, in spite of all the challenges, in spite of all that is taking place, this, the, the word of God still bears fruit a hundredfold. And Max Luster said, how? I don't know. Because of the grace of God. And that's why the first reading, the prophet Isaiah says, the rain does not fall to the ground before having done, um, doesn't return, before having done what it, was, it, what it was sent to do. So when rain falls, it percolates downwards, it goes into the ground, the trees are able to, to absorb the water, we are able to use the water, and, and, and after, uh, it evaporates and, and goes back up into the atmosphere, but only after it has done what it's supposed to do. And Jesus says, so too is that word. That word is able to do what it has to do before it comes back to the Lord. But we must have faith. Faith that ours is to sow the seed. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are difficulties. Yes, there are all kinds of things that will be taking place. But ours is to sow that seed and trust that God, God's word has an inner power of its own. God's word has an inner power of its own. You know when you were in a primary school, they gave you this seed, put some cotton and you have to, yeah? and then you have to measure it every day how much it grows. You remember that? Huh? You remember that year? Since that been a long, long time, you know? <laughs> and so, it, when we look at it, the seed, you ain't putting anything in, or you're putting it in, in, in a tissue paper or cotton. Everything is there. Everything is already there. That's the word. And it's just waiting for the right, the right environment to first forth. And, and to come up and to journey. It's just waiting for that. And so the word has an inner power of its own. It has an inner power and, and uh, uh, an effectiveness or an efficacy of its own by which it's just waiting for the right heart. And if it is sown in the right heart under certain conditions, then that word can break forth and burst forth. But we have to cultivate our hearts in such a way that that word can take root and that the roots are able to go down deeply. That the superficial Christianity will not be able to sustain, will not be able to sustain us in this time. Will not be able to sustain us in this time. In fact, I think the third problem which Jesus identifies in the parable is the major one for us. The love of riches and the cares of this world choke the word. That's the problem with our, our age. That's the problem with our age. The problem with our age is the, is the rat race in which we are all so busy. We are all so busy doing all kinds of things. The cares of this world and, 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 and running here, running there, up and down and in and out. And though there are things that are important that must be done, yet we have to find the space and time to allow God's word to go deeply within us. And the word of God will only grow in you in silence. In silence. In the silence of your heart. In the depths of your heart. Where you encounter God in that sanctuary. The word that is germinated will find that space to grow and put the roots down deeply. And, but the, the, see, the evil one is wise. He makes us busy. He makes us believe that the more busy we are, the better, the better we are doing. But when we become too busy, we don't have time to allow that word to percolate downwards within us. And so we need to create greater balance in our lives today. As Christians, we need greater balance to create space to listen 
to hear and to allow the word of God to germinate. You know, plants, you know, you know why are we going to write all of these things from the past? That's the history. Plants need water, man. There are conditions that you need to have. So, a plant, sunlight, water, soil, all of these conditions are necessary. And so, but I know everybody planted these days, you know, the diocese one planted trees, we planted left, right, and center. So too is the word of God. We need to put the right conditions so that things can germinate, the word of God can germinate in our hearts. So we need to stop. We need to reflect. We need to read the scriptures. We need to read a spiritual book. We need to listen. We need to pray. And the word of God will take root in our hearts. And then bear a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. And that would be the blessing, blessing of God upon our lives.